thank you very much, Dan, for um, giving me the opportunity to uh, join in this seminar and, and to, um, to uh, ad address you um, on integrative learning. And um, we have discovered in, in our studies, uh, the group of us over, over several years, that um, there are pedagogies that um, promote and foster integrative learning. And I've just named some of these, and, and uh, Ashley has referred to, to some of them too. So uh, Capstone and Final Year, or Final Year Projects, they tend to be in Final Year, and Shane will be talking about those later on. Um, Problem-based learning, uh, work-based learning, uh, building reflective logs and portfolios, undergraduate research, and the seminar. And um, in, in the work that I have done in previous years, um, I have looked at um, the, the field-based learning where we've turned or transformed it from lectures in the field to seminars in the field. So I would have written um, previously and um, presented with our group on that. So what I agreed to do for the, for the book was a chapter <coughs> on perhaps looking a little bit more at what we mean by the seminar. And in particular, um, the seminar as it, as it relates to first years. So the chapter will focus on embedding the seminar into the first year curriculum, but it will hopefully show, and I, I may have a chance <coughs> within these few minutes to, to develop this, um, it will hopefully show that what we actually do is we're integrating the pedagogies of integrative learning so that they're all coming together um, in, in, in the curriculum. Um, so, what is the definition of a seminar? So there have been, there have been several papers written on this, and, but what we, we did, um, in fact, James, in one of our postgraduate um, teaching sessions, uh, asked the postgraduate students, what is a seminar? And there were a range of answers between um, uh, an expert lecture followed by some discussion, all the, all the way to the other end, is totally and fully interactive. And we, we saw that it really depended on the culture, there were international students in the group, and it said depended on the discipline. So um, Richard Gale, who's written about the seminar, tells us that, in his view, the seminar is a signature pedagogy of the arts and humanities. So it's something they do and they always have traditionally done. He says it's somewhat alien to the sciences. So um, Harnish, who has also written about the seminar and has worked with Richard Gale, um, suggests that we put a little adjective in front of the seminar. So it's the book seminar, or it's the expert seminar, or it's um, the something else seminar to, to help us. Because it seems that we all have a picture of the seminar, but you know when you leave in the room um, or if you're in any group, we all have a slightly different picture of what the seminar is, depending on our discipline and our culture. Now, teaching experiences at either end of this spectrum can be very useful, you know, from the lecture to the fully interactive seminar. Um, in, in my chapter and in my work, I'm, I'm going to the interactive end of the, of the spectrum and trying to see how this can be um, introduced or embedded in first year curriculum. Um, so what does Gail say about the, the, the seminar at the interactive end of the spectrum? Um, a commitment to dialogue and conflict that requires a sharing of authority and control within the classroom. Okay. Um, active engagement and connection between not only ideas and experiences of one student, but the thoughts and insights of the entire class. It integrates information and analysis, text and dialogue, critique and community, while serving as a forum for experimentation and inquiry. And looking back at a successful seminar, Gail says, the class became a vehicle for integrating knowledge. Students were making autonomous connections across courses, between experiences, and throughout their lives. That sound, that, there's, there's magic in that, in that session. Um, but in my experience in first year science, that doesn't just happen. We don't walk into the room and suddenly we're getting this magic. 
So how do we proceed? Um, well, in, in, my, in my area, in, in the geosciences, the signature pedagogies, as Shulman would, would uh, describe it, um, are essentially the expert lecture, the associated practical work, and the field course. Now, this has worked well since the 19th century, but has been in need of some review because <coughs> the, these, these three parts were becoming a little bit more transmission model, um, as, as I mentioned before, um, the lecture in the field as opposed to um, the interactive field experience. So, um, the, so at the heart of the course, the field course, uh, at the heart of the experience, um, we were trying to develop the seminar in the field. Now, uh, just going back to my own teaching in the, in the first year of geoscience, I'm privileged in taking the first class of the first day of the student's academic experience. And I love that class. Now, I, I do ask, um, you know, what is geology? What comes to mind when you think of geology? And the students, um, will look at me, bright-eyed and attentive and enthusiastic looking, but there will be a wall of si silence at, at a question addressed to them. And perhaps one brave soul might eventually, if I wait long enough, shout out volcanoes or, um, you know, or put a hand up and invite it, say, earthquakes. And it may often be an international student, an American student, or maybe a mature student. But, but it's always a one word and addressed to me. So the students we're not going to get that uh, magic of, of Gale um, in, in that setting. Um, I go on to then, um, you know, with, with the uh, intentionality of um, integrative learning. So, um, as, as Hubert Hutchins says, as, as Ashley pointed out, um, in, intentional teaching for integrative learning is using one or more of those pedagogies to develop or build capacity for integrative learning. So in the first session, I do situate those uh, few small answers into some mind map. And we develop this mind map of how geology as the center of the world, center of everything, uh, relates to the other courses they're doing. And um, we, we put in the, the little answers as well that, that um, the students have given. I go on to um, suggest that um, being a geologist is like being a detective and finding clues um, that, that help us to interpret a sequence, a sequence of events. Now, um, what have they learned when they leave the first session? What is their impression? So they've learned that there's more to geology perhaps than they first thought, that geology is connected to everything, um, that our learning is going to be uh, inquiry-based, and that um, I want to hear the student voice, I want to hear them. I want to hear their opinions and their answers. So that's not bad for the first hour. What have I learned? Well, it's clear to me that if I want seminars, to use seminars within this first year group of over 100 students, to build capacity for integrative learning, there would have to be a, a gradual development and scaffolding of this um, group. So by week two, they may be happy just to maybe talk to a neighbor, with a little question, and maybe then direct an answer back to me. But still, it's kind of what we might call parallel play. It's not collaborative play. Um, and then, we, of course, we have um, one or two uh, practicals. I have one or two practicals where they, they're encouraged to talk to each other. Um, it's still not a seminar. And we have a one-day field trip where there's small group work, but they would still be uh, talking to me. Or, or to the leader. So we're a long way off the magic of Gail's seminar, but I like to think of these as these sort of organic seeds of the seminar to come, and that will build on this um, as the environment becomes safer. Now, I don't then see this group until later in the year, and I did a few years ago inherit um, the, the, uh, the, the field trip um, which was tabbed on at the end of the year with very few marks. Um, it was worth about half a credit, um, and it was a residential field course experience. And um, so the first semester 
brought about these what we might call incipient seminars or evolving seminars. Um, but how did we then develop the collaborative play or the seminar um, in, in the second semester? We built the learning community in the first. We've begun to build the learning community to build on that. Um, the students were not yet feeling they knew what geologists do. They were getting knowledge and they were beginning to discuss. Um, so first I had to uh, get uh, credit for the field course in its own right and redesign the field course. And what occurred to me in, in, in reading Harnish and Gale and our own experiences with staff development, um, getting a seminar uh, going with our own colleagues in, in the staff development sessions is not really a problem. The problem is getting people to stop talking and interacting. So, um, but it, it, and it seemed to me to be based on that they were talking about a lived experience. They're talking about what they're doing every day. Whereas in, in a first year class, they maybe don't ha feel they have that, that to offer. So what um, I had to do in the, in the second semester was to give them something that they owned. So we, we began small group sessions around a project that they, um, they um, selected themselves uh, that had, was going to relate to the field trip they were going to. So this was preparatory for these seminars in the field, which again, they don't just work without some kind of um, preparatory work. So the, the, the small group work, these became, um, as Harnish would describe, small group seminars. So the students, once they had something they owned, the, 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 the lab space became a, um, a number of small group seminars. So the, the students, with no trouble, um, seemed to uh, get on with it, discuss. Um, I had various photographs to put into my session, but they didn't, uh, they didn't transfer this morning. So um, you can imagine the lab, um, instead of them all facing me, they're all huddled around doing their own work. And they go away and they meet. And then they, they have to come back and tell us about the process of the group work, how it's working, and things they've learned. So they're meeting in other spaces, cafes or library rooms. Um, they're meeting on Facebook. They're owning something. They're becoming expert in something. And they're asked to link to some other course they're doing in first year. They, so we're asking them to what we might call, rather than think aloud, we're asking them to link aloud, as, as um, uh, Jack Mino, who's an author in the book, um, um, would, would call it. So um, the students have to report back then to the whole group, and this is where the seminar experience begins to take off because they, they have something to report. It's something they've done and lived. Um, they're telling the group. And what's coming in here is, I'm listening, we're all listening, we're all assessing. Two minutes, okay. Um, we're all assessing. There's assessment going on. We're all getting feedback. So 100 students, um, although we, we tend to break them up into maybe 40, 50 students at a time, but they're all getting feedback that's timely, that's quality, that's helping their own project because they're listening to how the others are getting on and what barriers they have and what they've learned and who they're contacting. So um, we're all hearing, uh, we're getting the feedback without me marking 100 pieces of work. So it's timely and it's, it's, um, it's, it's good within, they can, they can improve their, their own work. So um, I suppose at the heart of this course at the end of the semester is what we might call slightly disrupting the traditional signature pedagogy, where we're developing the seminar that isn't traditional, where um, we're uh, trying to phase out the lecture in the field, which makes some resistance. So one has to try and bring colleagues along. Um, so the students don't resist, but maybe colleagues find it hard to hand over the authority and gift the learning to the learner. Um, so, I suppose just to finish off, I have one minute, I see. Um, the UCC Students Survey of Student uh, Experience tells us the students aren't confident at answering questions and, and um, 
uh, asking or answering questions in class. Less than 30%, and that's across the board undergraduate, so first years would be a higher percentage than that. So if we really believe the seminar is, is uh, important for building integrative learning, we can't leave it till later years. Even the arts faculty the other day, they were saying that it's hard to get seminars going in third year. So getting them going in first year is difficult. But if we think it's important, then we must um, uh, try intentionally to build these what I'm calling seminar moments into the first year curriculum. So opportunities. It doesn't have to be an hour-long seminar. It's just, it's just recognising those opportunities and valuing them, allowing time for them. Sometimes they occur unpredictably, so uh, uh, you know, to, to, to be intentional about using them. Since I'm, I should have, uh, oh yeah, I had some reflective comments from the students who do reflect, a little reflective piece in the projects. Um, a lot was put into the project and we all got a lot out of it. Um, I'll, I'll move on because my time is up. But just conclusions and implications. Um, so building capacity for integrative learning is important. Don't leave it to after the first year. Start right away. Um, embedding the seminar, se seminar moments into first year is one of the most valuable experiences as, as in my experience for students. Um, so as the focus was on embedding these seminar moments and experiences into first year, I discovered that we were actually integrating the pedagogies of integrative learning. They were doing undergraduate research, they were doing work-based learning in the field, they were doing um, building communities and reflective blogs. Um, and then build assessment and feedback into every seminar. It could be formative, but it's, it could be peer assessment and learning. And maybe uh, linking then to, to what Shane would have to say, this course was essentially, it, it occurred to me, a capstone course, getting students to pull together all the things they've done during the year. And perhaps we should be having these capstone courses towards the end of every year of every course. Yeah. I'll finish that. Thanks.